Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to get the graphs out of Insight. Uh, it's a little bit different because I can't get Insight Lite to work. I don't know if it's been a new change or if something else, so I've given up with that. So I'm going to use actual Insight. Uh, that might change a few little bits, but shouldn't change too much. So uh, I've imported my data set using file and import, much same as you would in Insight Lite. And I want to be able to draw a time series graph of this. Now that's that's a little bit different. So I need to go to the advanced menu and say that I want to work with time series. And that will open up a new different window. So the first thing is it's asking me about which variable is my time. So I can specify which variable is my time here. It's already done that. And then I get to choose which variables I want to plot. So if I click on time series plot, it will show me and animate the joining up of all these different time periods to give me the Arctic pattern that I can see in a year. Okay, so that's my first year done and it will start to speed up as it goes through. So that's my second year. And now it's getting quicker. And you can see it's beginning to make a much more sense of that graph. Okay, you should be able to see the seasonal changes and everything else that are going on in there. Okay, so that's, that's my time series plot. And the red line it puts on there is my long-term trend. Now, unlike NZ Grapher, when I look at my time series plot in Insight, it doesn't give me the values at the start and at the end. So I have to estimate those. So I'd estimate that about nine and a half probably. I estimate that about eight and a half. So over the time, I've lost a million square kilometers of Arctic sea ice. So that's my first graph. If I click on the decompose button, it gives me the same graph as I can get out of NZ Grapher. So at the top is my long-term trend with my raw data. And then I've got my seasonal changes. Notice how it's just a repeat of the seasonal change every year. And this is the residual. So that's the difference between my long-term trend and my seasonal from my raw data. So I'm looking for any times it's not around about zero. I can also look at my seasonal graph. And again, on the right hand side of my graph, much the same as in NZ Grapher, I've got my average seasonal effect. So the zero line that comes through here is my long term trend. And I can see that in March, I have the highest amount of sea ice in the Arctic. And in September, I have the lowest amount of sea ice. And in March, I'm about 4 million kilometers squared more of sea ice. And in September, I'm about maybe 5 million kilometers squared, fewer amounts of sea ice. And I can see a pattern that makes sense to me, have come from the Northern Hemisphere, that in January, February, and March, it's the coldest. So therefore, my sea ice is growing. As we come into spring and summer, it begins to fall down. And then the lowest amount is in September. And that doesn't surprise me because September... There'll have been lots of residual warmth for the whole summer. It's possibly still going to have ice that's melting, even though we're beginning to move into autumn. On the left-hand side of that graph, it's exactly the same. It shows me the year each year, so I can check the pattern is the same each year. So I can see that on, in virtually every year, apart from one, the highest point was in March. In that particular year there, the highest point was in February and it's the lowest values in September. Okay, last graph I want to plot opens up two windows. I've got my prediction graph here, and you can see the raw data, so the original data plotted in black. You can see the approximation from our model in green, and then you can see what it predicts is going to happen is the red line, and the range of values we think are likely to happen are in the pinky area. And here it gives me the table of output so that I can actually read off that in uh, February 2012, I think there will be about 12 million kilometers squared of 
sea ice, but it's going to be a range of between 13.696 kilometers squared and 10.81. 841 million kilometers squared. So those are all the different graphs I can do using Insight, okay? So that's, each one opens up in a new window, so they become quite easy for you to copy and take around. I can do a multiple plot So if I look down the bottom, it says multi-plot, and I can plot both of those at the same time. So I can see the difference between my Arctic and my Antarctic sea ice and look at patterns there. So it appears there's much more sea ice in Antarctica. So therefore, this is not an even scale. And that might be something that I look at when I'm talking about showing insight. Okay, so that is my video on time series for using insight.